Hi, my name is Bao Deng, and today I will talk to you about a specific enzyme named Hostratus peroxidase, also known as HRP. This enzyme is found in the roots of Hostratus plant and is used extensively in biochemistry applications. To be honest, when I first heard the words Hostratus, I thought of something along the line of I have a host, I have a radish. Uh, Hostratus? I mean, Hostratus? So after a little googling, I found out that the name Hostradish comes from the mispronunciations of the German word Meerrettich by English people, which turns the word into Meerrettich, that basically translated into Hostradish, which means it has nothing to do with hosts or radishes. In fact, ironically, this plant is toxic to livestock animals, such as hosts, cows, and goats. So why do we care for Hostradishes? While the plant may be poisonous to horses, it may provide many benefits to humans. It has high nutrient and mineral content to aid in weight loss, lower blood pressures, and can prevent cancer due to its extremely high level of glucosinolates. Additionally, in the roots of horseradish exist monomeric heme-containing peroxidases that are very beneficial to humans. The most common peroxidase isoenzyme of horseradish that was studied extensively is the HRPC type as shown in the picture. The complete amino acid sequence of HRP was first determined by Wielinger in 1979 and the structure of HRPC was first reported in 1997 using X-ray crystallization by Michael Gacchidi and colleague. However, over time more detailed description of HRP is reported, as 3D structure of catalytic intermediates and several substrate complexes of HRP have also been reported. So, let's explore the HRP structure. Hostratus peroxidase is made up of three main molecules. Molecule 1 is peroxidase C1A, which is an enzyme consists of 306 residue. It is heavily glycosylated, exists mostly as alpha helix, with a little bit of beta sheet shown in the pictures as yellow colored. Molecule 2 is a heme prosthetic group, which is located at the center of the enzyme. It has a planar structure with the iron atom held tightly in the middle of the polyethylene ring, which is comprised of four pyro molecules. The heme group has a histidine attached in the proximal histidine residue, HIS-170, which is located below the heme group, and a second histidine residue in the distal side of the heme group, which is open for hydrogen peroxide to attach to during reduction oxidation reaction. The third molecule are the two structural calcium ions located within the helical regions of the enzyme, with one in the distal region and the other in the proximal region. They play a very important role in the activity of the enzyme, as losing them causes the enzyme to lose its stability. So how does HRP work? In the peroxidase cycle, hydrogen peroxide bonds to the iron atom on the distal side of the ferric enzyme, forming compound 1 and the pi cation radical which is then reduced by a substrate to form compound 2, and then reduced again to return to the ground state. The enzyme also has an oxidase cycle that form ferrous enzyme and compound 3 intermediates. However, due to the limited time, the cycle is not mentioned in this presentation. From the catalytic process, several residues were found to be important in the function of HRP enzyme, including Archie 938 that helped to cleave O2 bond of peroxide and facilitate rapid binding of hydrogen peroxide to HRP. Histidine 42 also helped O2 cleavage and facilitate formations of compound 1 and 2. Additionally, the reducing substrate binding site of HRP is a hydrophobic pocket provided by seven residues and heme methyl C18. However, they could not be isolated from the BDP file, so they were not shown. HRP enzyme by itself does not provide any benefits. However, when this is joined genetically or chemically to a secondary antibody, it becomes ideal for ELISA, Western blot, and other immunohistochemistry applications. How does that work, you ask? Well, first primary antibody binds to antigen, then secondary antibody conjugated with HRP binds to primary antibody, then HRP will oxidize substrate using hydrogen peroxide, producing colored precipitate or light at the location of antigen, which then can be detected by spectral photometry. Other applications of HRP include research on targeted cancer treatment. Cancer is one of the major causes of death worldwide, and the most common treatments of chemotherapy and radiation both cause massive damage to healthy and cancerous cells. Thus, to eliminate some of that problem, 
targeted cancer therapy is being researched. Two targeted cancer therapy that use HRP are called gene-directed enzyme prodrug therapy and antibody-directed enzyme prodrug therapy. In gene-directed enzyme prodrug therapy, gene for HRP enzyme is directed to target tumor cells, which then gets translated and expressed in the cell. Then a non-toxic prodrug, such as plant hormone indo-3 acetic acid, IAA, are injected into the cells. IAA then get oxidized by HRP and turn into a cytotoxic anti-cancer agent that damage cells' DNA and destroy the cells. It's also caused by standard effect, in which diffusion of a toxic compound also kills the neighboring cancer cells. Similarly, in antibody-directed enzyme prodrug therapy, cells are also killed by HRP-IAA combination. However, instead of gene transferring, HRP is conjugated with a tumor-specific antibody, which delivered the enzyme directly to the site of the tumor cells. Then IAA is injected and oxidized into a cytotoxin by HRP. Tumor cells are also killed via bystander effects. Not only HRP is used for biochemistry applications, it is also being researched at targeted cancer therapy. Thus, this enzyme is very interesting and deserves further research and understanding. I hope you all enjoyed my video. Thank you so much.